Hello and welcome to Normal Game Couch. Today I'm playing Pure Solar and The Great Architects. Um, I'll tell you, man, it's been a pretty hectic couple of months. Um, this is really the first episode where everything's back to normal. Um, I had, uh, of course, Super Game Couch EX which was great, had a lot of fun, had some people out to the house, played uh, Drive Club, um, Natural Doctrine, played uh, Alien Isolation, which was a laugh. We had such a good time playing that. And of course, uh, Shadow of Mordor, which, which was great. Uh, I actually have a friend on the development team for Shadow of Mordor, so that was a special, a special treat to do. And I know he saw it and thought the stream was good, so I got a thumbs up from him. So that was cool. But Couch was, which was my Diablo 3 event, and then I had Destiny Dues Days, which was every Tuesday we played Destiny. This is the first first uh, uh, day back doing a normal, regular, run-of-the-mill episode. But the thing is, it's not a run-of-the-mill episode because I'm playing Pure Solar. This is a game, I've actually had this game on pre-order for the Genesis. That's right, the Sega Genesis for upwards of four years, maybe even more than four years. I've lost track at this point. The company that's putting it out, Watermelon, uh, you know, they're suffering the wrath of, of their fan base right now because they're taking so long to put it out. I don't mind waiting because it's, it's, a, it's a niche product. It's not something you can go to Walmart and buy, but uh, uh, in a sense you can, because you can buy a points card and buy it digitally on the PS4. Uh, so I have, uh, I have the, the digital HD version, which is what we're playing today. Unfortunately, not the Genesis version, although I can switch to the Genesis graphics, but I probably won't do that in this case, because, you know... I mean, you know, Watermelon put a lot of effort into uh, releasing the HD version, and you can tell, it looks great. Um, and we're not going to play on my save, we're going to start a new save here. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, over nine hours into the game here on my real save. Uh, but we're going to start a normal game couch save, just, just, for, uh, just for you guys here. Should have retitled it. So what this is is a uh, kind of a 16-bit style RPG. I mean, it is a 16-bit RPG because, like I said, it was released on the Genesis. Uh, personally, I'm waiting for the third reprint to be released, and then Watermelon takes my address and sends me out a copy, but until I get that, this is what I'm playing. Uh, to me, the Genesis is the definitive version. It's also released on Dreamcast, and a lot of people consider that to be the de definitive version. But, uh, uh, you know, to, to read the website and to look at the, uh, the literature and, and their, uh, uh, their graphics on the website and everything, it seems that they're pushing for the Genesis to be the definitive version of the game. So you play this kid named Hostin. Uh, his dad is sick. I can't move right now, this is kind of playing out a cutscene. Alright, 
now I can move. All right, so this is uh, Austin's mom here, so we'll talk to her. All right, so uh, you, you you play like a botanist. Hostin is a uh, a botanist here, and he knows that in the caves there is a uh, what did they say it was a root? I don't remember if they said it was a root or not. But there's there's something called the mine shoe root or leaves or something uh, that has the uh, uh, curative property to heal his his father should let him rest. I agree. So Hostin's mother does not want him going to the caves. So you know what that means? Time to go to the caves. The music is really good in this game. Alright, so Hostin's father keeps a dagger in his study. And Alina has her bow and arrows in her room. So, we learn three things. We learn that Hostin wants his dagger. We learn that Alina wants his uh, wants her uh, bow and arrow, and that there's this character named Edessa that's working on a secret project. Um, we definitely should go check that out, but I want to get I want to get equipped first. That's uh, step one, as far as I'm concerned. In the study, that would be just right here. Yeah. I could level cities with this dagger. <laughs> So it doesn't do any good unless I equip it, so let's equip it. Alright. And we'll go pick up Alina's bow and arrow. I seem to recall that she lives off to the right? Somewhere? Up here? Is this right? This doesn't feel right. I think this is right though.
Yep, there it is. She says she's all set, but I know that she's not because we need to equip it. Alright, now we're all set. That's uh, Alina's father. He's kind of a jerk. <laughs> if the angel's altar was built by wandering clowns, then who built my pants? So, I don't know, does this guy have, like, Alzheimer's syndrome or something? He's kind of uh, off his rocker a little bit. Senile. I don't know what that was about. Clowns building his pants or whatever. Seems pretty senile to me. Alina definitely has an interesting home life. You know, that's kind of something that's kind of cool about this game is like everybody has like their struggles you know like all the characters and, and they, they all like kind of seem like real human struggles you know it's not like uh oh of course the village gets destroyed in like every other jrpg so you know the hero goes out to avenge like the death of the king or something you know like that that's too cliche these these kind of stories in this game aren't cliche. They're very realistic, like things that people deal with in real life. So Edisot moved out when he was 13. There he is. The Donatello of the group. Herbs. Mind you, herbs. That's it. I don't remember if it was like root or sprout or whatever. It's mind you, herbs. 